have you done for me lately? Okay? That's a favorite in all sports. It's not that you won the 100 yard dash. We're going to our next event. What are you going to do this time? Okay? Your football team has an amazing win. What are they going to do next week? A coach has a wonderful season. He's coming back next year. What are you going to do this year? What have you done for me lately? That's a human thing that we have within us. And the children of Israel were no different. They had just watched God split the sea in half and they walked across on dry land and they get to the other side and they sing His praises and everything else. And, and, and now the big thing is over with and that how quickly we forget the things that are done for us and we're expecting that next thing. Somebody gets a pay raise. Woo! I'm making more money. Six months from now, you know what you're wondering about? When I'm going to get the next pay raise. Okay? And that's just human nature. So, God has just split the seat for them. Go to the next picture for me there. So now he's got to do another big thing. Because the children of, of, uh, of Israel are being the children of Israel. Exodus 14, 1 through 36. We will not get through this today. <laughs> and they journeyed from Elam, and all the congregation of Israel came of Israel came out into the wilderness of sin. Now he could have taken them the other way. We looked at a map last week. He could have taken them up by the Philistines, and they could have been in Israel, and maybe 15, 20 days they'd have been there. But God knew that if they went that way, they would have to fight their way there against the Philistines. And he says, they're not ready to go to war yet. I've got to get them ready as a nation to be a solid group and not just a bunch of, right now he's got 12 little tribes of Israel that don't work together. And they all had different jobs when they were in Egypt. He's got to make them a cohesive group that follow him. which is between Elam and Sinai on the 15th day of the second month after they departed from the land of Egypt, the whole congregation of, Is of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. They just watched Moses part the sea and now they're going to start complaining to him in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said, Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. It'd be better than being out here in this desert. When we sat by the pots of meat, hear what they're saying? When we sat by the pots of meat, we we're being beaten, scourged, killed, driven, everything else by the Egyptians, treated terribly, but it was better to do that and have plenty of meat in our pot than what you're doing with us now. Oh, keep in mind, they have all their herds and flocks and cattle, but they don't want to eat their own cattle. No, they want the Lord to do something and Moses to do something because they're not finding food where they're going. They would have to eat their own stuff, their own cattle. And when we ate bread to the full, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill, to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Kill a cow. That's right. Feed a whole bunch of you. You know, they're complaining because they didn't go in a land, you know, and there wasn't all this food for them to eat, that they're having to work for it. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. Literally, they are going to eat angel food. Food that's never been seen before. 
and never will see again after the children of Israel actually go into Israel. This ceases and is never seen again. The only example that we have is a small pot of it that was put inside the Ark of the Covenant. That's it. So for this time period, God rained down angel food. And the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day that I might test them whether they will walk in my law or not. So he's setting up a test. I'm going to have you do this in a certain way and I want to know if you're going to follow the rules. He's trying to teach them. And it shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they have brought in, bring in, and it shall be twice as much as a daily gathering. Then Moses and Aaron said to all the children of Israel. Did you show the picture? Go back to the picture. Of them gathering this stuff. They had to go out in the morning. They couldn't wait. They had to get up early. There's very strict rules God gave for this. And go out and start gathering this stuff. At evening you shall know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord. For he hears your complaints about the Lord. The Lord's hearing you. You're complaining. He's already done all this great stuff for you. And now here you're complaining. He's hearing you. For he hears your complaints against the Lord. But what are we that you should complain against us? Moses says, I'm just a man. Aaron's just a man. You're yelling at us. You know, the Lord hears what you're yelling and everything. But we're just people. We can't do anything. Somebody's going to do something that's going to have to be God. Also, Moses said, this shall be seen when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and in the morning bread to the full. For the Lord hears your complaints which you make against him. And what are we that you complain are not against us but against the Lord. Then Moses spoke to Aaron saying to all the congregation of the children of Israel come near before the Lord for he has heard your complaints. And now it comes to pass as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the children of Israel. Now what's going on here? Moses is speaking to Aaron. Remember Moses has a speech impediment. He doesn't speak well. He tells stuff to Aaron, and Aaron is his spokesman. Okay, So Aaron's telling the people what Moses is hearing from the Lord. The Lord speaks to Moses. Moses tells Aaron. Aaron speaks to the people. But all this complaining you're doing, yeah, you're not complaining to us. You're complaining to the same Lord that split the Red Sea. He has the power to wipe you all out. that they looked towards the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spoke to Moses. Now he spoke to Moses, so the people heard God talk to Moses. Folks, this happens only a few times in the Bible that the Lord speaks audibly and people hear it. It happened to Paul on the way to Samaria, to Syria. Okay, when Jesus spoke to him and people heard it. It doesn't happen awesome. This is a big moment. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, I have heard the complaint of the children of Israel. Speak to them saying, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am Lord your God. <coughs> Go to the next picture right here. This is a covey of quail. Does everybody know what quail are? Okay. Uh, I think they're cute little things. Now some things I learned about quail. Quail don't wander far. Okay. For what's fixing to happen has to be a miracle. And wherever the children of Israel go, if these quail are going to be there, God had to pre-plan that. And it takes a while to grow a big group of quail. Okay, so here's what's going to happen here with this covey of quail. So it was that the quail came up 
at evening. Enough quail to feed a million people. Okay, I've had quail before. They're little bitty things about that big. It takes like four of them for me to have enough to eat. There's not a lot there. But God brought that many quail for a million people in that congregation to all eat. And the children. Okay, that's a lot of quail. That didn't just happen. And now these quail are going to follow Israel and every morning be there and every evening be there for them to go gather. And when they go gather, they're not having to hunt them and shoot like people who hunt quail. They're not having to do that. They're literally walking up and picking up the quail enough for their family and carrying it back to them. And the quail are just sitting there letting them do it. That takes God. I've been around quail. You get between, from me to Ron to quail, and you hear, and off they go. Okay? This is a God thing that's happening. So it was that the quail came up in the evening and covered the, and covered the camp. You couldn't walk but step, up, step on one. And in the morning, the dew lay around the camp. And when the layer of dew lifted, there was on the surface of the wilderness a small round substance, as small as frost on the ground. So when the children saw it, they said to one another, What is it? When you say, when they said, What is it? The Jewish word is manna. When you hear manna, the children are looking down and seeing this and going, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Let every man gather it according to each one's need. One omer for a person according to the number of the persons. Let every man take for those who are in his tent. Then the children of Israel did so, and they gathered some more and some less. Go to the next picture. This is an omer. Okay? What a man eats is an omer, because they're having bird in the evening, and this is their breakfast in the morning, is an omer of this. Or you can see over here, not quite a cup. Well, they use tessel. Okay, that's a, 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 another word for it. But not quite a cup is an omer. And they're saying, for everybody in your house, you gather one of these. So when it was measured in omer, he who gathered much had nothing left over. And he who gathered little had no lack. And every man gathered according to each one's needs. And Moses said, let, not, let no one leave any of it until the morning. Do you hear the command? Eat it. Smash it. Grind it, bake it in cakes, make tortillas out of it. Whatever you want to do, it's like flour, but it's angel food flour. Okay? But don't leave any of it till the morning. You're to eat all of it every day. You're not to start hoarding this stuff up. You eat what the Lord's doing. What is He doing? He's providing you your daily bread. Okay? He's teaching them. Every man had gathered according to his own need. And Moses said, let no one leave it until morning. Notwithstanding, they did not heed Moses. But some of them left part of it till the morning. And it bred worms and stank. Okay? What, what, what is that my mama used to say? She used to have to sift the flour and have little bugs in the flour. Ladies, what were those called? Bow weevils. Bow weevils, okay? Well, that's what's happening here. They didn't do what Moses said. They left it to the next day, and it bred worms and it started stinking. And Moses was angry with them. No wonder. God told you what to do. He told you how to do it, and you didn't listen, and now you've got stinking food in the camp. Do what you're told to do. 
The children of Israel, God called them a lot of things. Stubborn, hard-headed. He had a lot of words for the children of Israel. But they just over and over wouldn't do what they're told to do. Even when he made it just as plain as he could make it, they still would not do. So they gathered every morning, every man according to his need. And when the sun became hot, listen, it melted. Went away. If you didn't go in the morning and get your food and you tried to go out there at 10, 11 o'clock in the afternoon to gather, it's gone. When the sun comes up, it melts away like frost. So it was on the sixth day that they gathered twice as much, two omers for each one, and all the rulers of the congregation came to Moses, and he said to them, This is what the Lord said, Tomorrow is the Sabbath day. We celebrate the Sabbath on Sunday. Messianic Jews, they celebrate Sabbath on Saturday. Okay, It's the difference in our calendars and what we call the Sabbath day. The Sabbath is supposed to be a time when it's holy. And you're not supposed to do heavy work. Now, I have people come to me. They've read this passage and they come to me. Pastor, I don't have a choice. I lose my job if I don't go in on Sunday. Well, my answer is, you go do what you got to do. You're taking care of your family. You know what the higher commandment is? You do for your family. The man or the woman who does not do for their family, shame on them. They're to be treated as a heathen if they don't do for their family. If you're required to be somewhere on Sunday and work, take the time that day, get in your Bible, read your Bible, pray, worship the Lord, sing a little song or something to Him. Okay? It's not, you're not, I'm afraid, will I still go to heaven if I work on Sunday? Yes, you will. Okay? If you're doing what you have to do for your family, you do it. But God says try to keep it holy. These people didn't have to work on Sunday. God was providing them their food. All they had to do on Saturday is go gather enough for Saturday and Sunday. Wait a minute, didn't we just say that if we didn't eat it that day, it was going to bring worms and stink? Isn't that what just happened? God's showing another miracle here. He's not going to let it stink on Sunday. Aren't you glad it don't stink on Sunday morning? <laughs> Tomorrow's the Sabbath, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will today and boil what here you can boil it to. I'm not big on boiling bread, okay, but I think they call that what? A bagel, okay? Maybe this is where bagels came from, okay? So you didn't know bagels were boiled? Yeah, it's boiled bread. That's what a bagel is, okay? So, well, it's partially boiled, partially cooked, you know. But well, we can get into the, how, how bagels are made. I, I went to a bagel factory one time and they were showing that. Okay, so um, if you want to boil it, boil it. If you want to bake it, bake it. And lay it up for yourself that all remains and keep it till the morning. So now he's telling them to do what he just told them not to do. But this is different. This is Sabbath. God's going to do a miracle. You're going to cook that bread. You're going to keep it till tomorrow morning. It's not going to bring words. It's worms. It's not going to stink. It's going to be great, great and fresh tomorrow morning for you to eat it because I don't want you working on a Sunday. So they laid it till the morning in Moses' commandment, and it did not stink, nor were there any worms in it. And Moses said, Eat that today, for today is the Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. Hear what Moses just said? Don't go out to the field looking for it. It's not going to be there. Six days you have gathered, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath day, there will be none. Now it happened that some of the people <laughs> went out anyway. Some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather it and found none. They won't listen. They're hard-headed. God does not expect us to be hard-headed. God tells us what we're supposed to do. We sing the song, Trust and Obey. 
They didn't trust the Lord, and then they didn't obey the Lord. You've got to keep the Sabbath holy. It doesn't matter if you're at work or... I tell you what, I'm at work all the time and people think I'm crazy because I'm walking around and they see my lips moving. And they thought that he's talking to himself. No. Me and the Lord's having a conversation. You see, there's no restriction. You don't have to be here to worship the Lord. Especially on the Sabbath day. If something happens, happened to me, what, about six months ago, we had a flood come through. And I got up in the morning and my toilets backed up all over in the floor and everything else. And my boat was floating out into the pond. And I had to call John and say, John, help me. Can, can you cover me this morning? All this is happening. But when it was over, you know what I did? I went to my room and I spent some time with God. And I worshipped God that day. I didn't have to be here at church. I did it at home. And John, John did a marvelous uh, job that day of, of preaching for me. But I woke up to a mess. And I had to handle that. Jesus said to His congregation as they're walking through, and they're complaining because they're picking grain off of, off of wheat or corn or something. I forget exactly what they were picking off and eating it. And the Pharisees well, you can't do that. Or he healed a man on a Sabbath day. And, oh, you can't do that. It's a Sabbath day. Legalism. Okay, legalism. All right? And Jesus says, if any one of you, if your donkey fell into a ditch on a Sabbath day, tell me you're not going to go get him out of that ditch. Yeah, every one of them would, right? Animals back then were very precious cost a lot of money, and was very important to the family to help feed them, every one of them is going to go get their donkey on a Sabbath day. And the Lord's not going to condemn them for that. Okay? So sometimes you have to work on a Sabbath day. But it's okay. Find time in that day to make it holy to you, between you and the Lord. I want to thank you for joining us here at Friday Baptist Church, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. I hope you're getting a blessing from these sermons about Moses and their travels to the children of Israel. Once again, thank you for joining us in front of Baptist Church.